the day is coming um and i know the day is coming where there's a lot of emails there's a lot of notes there's a lot of things out there that someone has collected and it when you see this it will blow your face off as to how disgusting this woman is kathleen kennedy and the people that are running uh lucasfilm the uh the uh especially over there at the storyboard group so i, I you guys just got a little taste of 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 what's to come A little taste of what is to come indeed. Uh, what Jay was telling us all those months ago was that this day would arrive, or I guess the following day if you're watching this on Wednesday, which is earnings day for Disney. How interesting the timing of this lawsuit, amongst other things, and we'll get to that in a moment. But it is the moment that I guess we were waiting for. Something Jay tried to warn me all those months ago on October 30th of 2023. He shared more, and there'll be more clips to come from that particular live stream here in the future as we work our way through this. But there is a treasure trove of email and other information out there that's been gathered for this very purpose. Today's lawsuit filing, um, or I should say the filing that happened on the 6th, is, uh, well, Significant because it is chasing down some precedent that had been established earlier that will involve a little bit of defamation amongst other things. Now, not having been through the entire lawsuit uh, filing myself, I will not speak on those matters. I will say this. This seems rather coordinated. It seems planned. And uh, we're going to get to that. In fact, let's get to that right here as we move forward into this recording. As you can see, I'm sponsored by myself, as always, Beach Punk. Beachpunk.us is the website where you can get all the amazing Beach Punk gear you could be looking for. And since the Rooster happens to be my brand, well, you can get yourself plenty of Roosters over there. And I'll say it the polite way <laughs> for purposes of my channel in this video. To move into what is actually happening, you have to understand what's been happening. Uh, Elon Musk has not been in a great uh, relationship with Bob Iger or uh, several of the other folks out there who choose to advertise or not advertise on his uh, social media platform, Twitter, or I guess it's known as X now, although I'm not sure I'll be able to make that change. But it was truly a dismal day for Disney, and they continue to have many, many more of those, and today just happened to be a series of them. But going back to the 4th of February, when Elon Musk was hanging out with Nelson Peltz at the red carpet event for Lola, the new Selena Gomez uh, effort, and basically just uh, publicly embracing each other, uh, saying that he was visiting with friends and hinting that he might acquire Disney. Then there's obviously video clips out there that point to that. In an article uh, written by WDW Pro on February 4th, it gets broken down saying that, um, well, uh, he, gosh, it's not the typical Hollywood reasons one might expect for Lola to go loca on the red carpet. It could be that Disney CEO Bob Iger is actually seeing red after what was surely an orchestrated public display of camaraderie between Nelson Peltz and Elon Musk. And, well, famously, just a few months ago at the Deal Book event, after Bob Iger exited the stage, Elon took it and said, uh, go fund yourselves. He told Bob to go fund himself. And then uh, said, oh, hi, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, you have Nelson Peltz after this company for a good reason. It has underperformed for a very long period of time during a very long tenure for some of the board members there and, of course, Bob Iger. But uh, the world's biggest entertainment company is really not invested in, well, their own company, especially the board members who own less than $15 million in Disney stock. Moving on, we have... What came out today, which I think is an even larger concern for uh, maybe everybody involved, 
And it's the day that Gina Carano dropped her lawsuit. And while it's an interesting read over here on Hollywood Reporter, we'll get back to Gina Carano's story on That Park Place, written by John F. Trent, in a wonderful article, basically breaking down what actually is happening, including the sex discrimination part of this. Now, Elon is definitely backing this effort, and uh, that's kind of intriguing to me. Uh, so yeah, with the help of Elon Musk, uh, she, after she was unceremoniously fired, has filed a suit. Corano was fired in February of 2021. Why are we saying it this way? Well, because a lot of the mainstream outlets said it this way. Perception is reality in a lot of these circumstances, as particularly when it comes to media lawsuits and a Lucasfilm spokesman who informed multiple media outlets, outlets that Gina Carano is not currently employed by Lucasfilm and there are no plans for her to be in the future. Well, that sounds interesting, an odd way to put that. And uh, nevertheless, her social media, and this is where we get into it, because nevertheless, her social media post denigrating people based on their cultural and religious identities are aberrant and unacceptable. Interesting. So that statement came from the spokesman after Carano shared a post from Warrior Priest Jim Podcast to her Instagram stories that read, well, basically an outline of what actually happened during the course of the Holocaust, which I guess history isn't taught very well these days, but... Um, the Post then shares a quote which reads, Because history is edited, most people today don't realize that to get to the point where the particular types of soldiers could easily round up 2,000 people of a certain faith, the government first had to make their own neighbors hate them simply for being of that particular faith. How is it that how is that any different from hating somebody for their political views? Interestingly enough, as of both kinds of belief systems, and uh, I would say it's not very different. In no way did this denigrate anyone other than perhaps the particular party that was, you know, ta taking out these thousands of people uh, in terrible ways, uh, treating them very poorly. Uh, is Disney siding with them? I don't know. I don't think so. But it move on. And of course, this is the post that's in question and um, kind of disturbing to be fair. So Karana announced uh, on the 6th, which when this airs will be yesterday, that she was suing the Disney company. And she put that on X. Today's an important day for me. I'm filing a lawsuit against Lucasfilm and Disney. She explained, and this is important, so I'll read it verbatim. After my 20 years of building a career from scratch and during the regime of former Disney CEO Bob Chappick, Lucasfilm made this statement on Twitter, terminating me from the Mandalor Mandalorian. Gino, Gina Carano is, is not currently employed by Lucasfilm, and there are no plans for her to be in the future. Nevertheless, her social media posts denigrating people based on their cultural and religious identities are aberrant and unacceptable. Well, Hard to take away that she was basically saying that it's difficult to uh, align yourself with those of the Yahtzees folks, but Disney seems to be trying to do that perhaps in this way. I don't know. I've been misreading this for a couple of years now. Uh, Disney did not actually make themselves very clear. And uh, to that end, I think the ambiguity may be their undoing. So... Of course, she continued, nothing could be further from the truth. The truth is I was being hunted down from everything I posted to every post I liked because I was not in line with the acceptable narrative of the time. I think that still goes on, Gina. My words were consistently twisted to demonize and de dehumanize me as an alt-right-wing extremist. Well, I guess I'm been called that myself. I'm certainly not, but uh, anyway, uh, it was a bullying smear campaign aimed at, aimed at silencing and destroying and making an example out of me. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. She continued, <clears throat> the thing is I never used an aggressive language. 
I shared thought-provoking quotes, pictures, memes, and occasionally used my own words, not with aggression, but with respect and occasional comedy to keep the mood light and dark, uh, excuse me, to keep the mood light in dark times. Look with your own eyes at what I posted and ask yourself, for example, where did I re compare Republicans to the Jewish people in the Holocaust? I didn't. Ask yourself why they were calling me racist. Was there any merit behind that or history of it whatsoever? No. Look at why I was called a phobe for making droid no noises from Star Wars. Beep, bop, boop. It was obviously directed at the online bullies who did not like, they did not in any way, uh, well, excuse me, directed it to the online bullies and did not in any way denigrate uh, a particular group of people. Were my questions about masks, lockdowns, and forced things okay to ask and push the subject into the light? Should we have been allowed to publicly discuss those to topics at that time without being harassed or censored? Absolutely. And of course, she's right. Carano then called out Hollywood for its hypocrisy. Hollywood says they support female representation and equal rights. Why then were my male co-stars permitted to speak without harassment and re-education courses, which we, we call struggle sessions, uh, or termination? But as I afforded the same right, uh, excuse me, but I was not afforded the same right to exercise my freedom of speech. And she's a thousand percent right because Pedro Pascal, he had carte blanche to mouth off and say a lot of untruthful things uh, and harass people. Truly. Artists do not sign away our rights as American citizens when we enter into employment. I have spoken to all my co-stars since I was fired and there is nothing but care and kind words between us. That's interesting. I respect their right to free speech and do not have to think the same on every issue to be their friends and work with them. And I know they feel the same towards me. Rather surprising, considering some of the things that Pedro Pascal has said. But again, you can be a bully on the keyboard and not be able to back it up in person. So that says an awful lot. Carano then detailed how... This lawsuit against the Walt Disney Company and Lucasfilm came about, and I thought this was rather interesting. And if you don't think all of this is being orchestrated and planned down to the very moment, then, well, I don't know what to say. I know that Elon and his team have been planning uh, something like this for a long period of time. I know that uh, Disney's interaction with Elon and his company, or companies, especially through their news organization. Now, don't forget, Disney owns ABC, and they are afforded an awful lot of leeway when they report stories, and I use the word report lightly, tongue-in-cheek, uh, that maybe some things that are being reported in outlets that Disney controls or has sway over uh, weren't necessarily very kind to Gina or any other situation that involved uh, somebody of similar opinion. Uh, so Carano would thank Musk and X and say, I would like to express my deepest gratitude and thanks to Elon Musk and X for giving me the opportunity to bring my case to light. Well, I think she'll do rather well. And I congratulate her for on what she did. If you want to read that post, it's still up there on X. She did a great job. Very, very well spoken. Um, and I have a feeling that uh, some people are going to be in some big trouble because one of the things I led today's video with was a clip from Jay, Drunk3PO. Uh, you can check out his YouTube channel. He's a brilliant creator and a very good friend. Um, he basically said there is a treasure trove of information that uh, has been gathered uh, to do battle in this way. And uh, as was shared by Elon today, uh, you don't have to go very far to look for things that were part of the incredibly racist campaign that Disney put together and exclusionary. Even though These are inclusion standards that are very exclusionary when you read them about on-screen representation and that you have to have three of these five things. If you look through all of this, um, it's basically a list of how to exclude particular people. 
And as you go through this and scroll through this, it becomes more and more disgusting because they're doing it at every level and they're doing it based on immutables, characteristics that you're actually not allowed to, uh, well, be prejudiced against when you're comes to when it comes to employment. Let's just put it that way. Um, this is uh, the what is it? The institutionalization of racism in an organization. Pretty disgusting. Interestingly enough, when Elon presented this, the great and powerful libs of TikTok, and she's pretty awesome, said, "Elon, can you buy Disney and fix it?" Well, Elon responded with a thoughtful. Hmm. I think I remember this. It's almost beat for beat what happened with Twitter. Interesting. Anyway, we have to get back to what's really leading us down this particular primrose path, and that's the fact that Elon has joined, well, with Elon has joined with Peltz. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Um, Peltz has been making a case for just how poorly Disney has done under its current group of leaders. Um, you can see here that after just one year, Carol and Everson made sure to be 26% below the S&P. Uh, in the eight years that Maria Elena, uh, Elena Largmasino, there, I said it, uh, she managed to get it to 160 percent under and the Mark Parker, who they march ahead, by the way, in their website that they launched to the general public today, the votedisney.com website, which is laughable, which insults investors uh, uh, that are not institutional investors, that is, uh, with how to vote or who to vote for, more or less. Um, Mark Parker was marched out front. It's a great leader leading them to 167% underperformance to the S&P 500. So, great leadership team. But yeah, this is the tweet that Scott Polhamus uh, actually dropped. And this is Nelson Peltz's head there. I pointed that out in yesterday's video. And uh, this is Elon Musk hanging out. I have a feeling things are about to get rather serious, but... Disney had a lot of bad news today. And it wasn't just the things that I brought to your notice. It was also something that I found in Cosmic Book News. And it was this terrible tragedy that happened on the set of a production that was rushed back into production that is currently under investigation. A Marvel uh, rigger, which is uh, somebody who rigs the lights and things like that. Uh, a Marvel IATSE employee. Uh, was uh, unfortunately lost their life. It's probably the best way to say it. Not a wonderful day to end the day for Disney and company uh, as we got that new news at about 5 p.m. today. So the person doing the rigging fell from the rafters uh, and the incident obviously didn't happen while the series was filming. So... Uh, this happened at Radford Studios, where Wonder Man is currently being filmed. Um, and, of course, the California Division of the Occupational Safety and Health folks are, are uh, hard at work there. Lots of uh, messages coming from the organizations involved, including IATSE. And um, even, uh, even Disney, I think, sent out a, uh, a message. Um, we'll have to see if this goes well. I don't expect Wonder Man as a series to uh, to do great for Disney, but I don't expect much to do great for Disney these days. And speaking of things that were going great, at least for a moment, until the lawsuit was announced and a few other things came to light, Disney was trading near $100 today when it closed at the closing bell at 4.02 p.m. And at... Um, after hours trading at 5.41 p.m., which I think is the last update that I grabbed, um, it had already started to retreat, probably on the news of the lawsuit. Um, this is uh, interesting, as uh, you could probably guess. There's a reason that the numbers trickled upwards. It's the proxy fight and the fact that it takes a lot of money to get involved in Disney 
and bring it to the point where people can actually vote out the terrible board of directors that in a lot of people's estimation are quite corrupt. Regardless, I'm going to once again uh, play the clip uh, to lead us out um, that uh, that uh, Jay kind of led me in here with today. And it is the fact that um, there are more shoes to drop here, including a treasure trove of documents that uh, could bring about some real problems for Disney. The day is coming, um, and I know the day is coming, where there is a lot of emails, there's a lot of notes, there's a lot of things out there that someone has collected, and it when you see this, it will blow your face off as to how disgusting this woman is, Kathleen Kennedy, and the people that are running uh, Lucasfilm, the uh, the uh, especially over there at the storyboard group. So. I, I, you guys just got a little taste of 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 what's to come. And now we're there. The best thing Disney could do would be to settle with Gina as quickly as possible, offer her uh, her job back with that series that they were going to do featuring her, which I believe she had an agreement for. And uh, uh, quietly find a way to quell uh, the concerns of uh, the likes of Nelson Peltz and Elon Musk. But knowing Bob Iger, none of that's going to happen. On that note, what do you think? Do you think that this was all planned? Do you think that this was something that was carefully uh, executed so that it could do the most effective damage over the course of the last 12 hours, do you think we have an additional 12 hours of damage coming in the future? I would anticipate so. I have a feeling that as these uh, proxy votes, uh, as these uh, slate votes come in, um, uh, despite Disney's wishes that everybody wo vote white, which is actually something they say, um, I think you're going to see a lot more people voting for tree and blue. And I think we may have a new contender step into the ring. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And as always, be sure to take care of yourself, take care of others. And until next time, see ya.